Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Monday evening. That would be Monday, July 11th, 2022. So I was just sitting down to this rant and I just learned one minute ago that I have hip campers on their way. Uh, I don't know when they're going to be arriving. So uh, anyway, I need to be keeping my eye out. So if I have to jump up out of here. So anyway, I want to thank alert listener Rory Chadberry for sending me this post. It's I'm going to stretch the envelope just a little bit here at Collapse Chronicles. This was actually a 4th of July, uh, a flag-waving uh, July 4th post coming in a little bit late. We're a week late, but uh, anyway, I thought this was worth mentioning So for today's Chronicle of the Collapse. And of course, I left my computer over on the table, so we're going to let Sancho Panza hold down the fort. Now don't let Bigfoot uh, beat you over the head with that American flag, little dog. Okay. So, uh, this little essay coming from a website called the Hip Crime Vocab. This not to be confused with Hip Camp. This is Hip Crime. A fellow named Chad C. Mulligan uh, taking uh, this is, I don't know if you're taking this. Was this Kurt Vonnegut or was it Leon Russell? And then we have a duck rodeo coming on. I, I let the ducks out of their fence for the first time, so I'm going to have to get the ducks back when this is all done. But anyway, before the duck rodeo and before my campers get here, stranger in a strange land when you feel like a foreigner in your own country. This is by some fellow named Chad Chad C. Mulligan. I like the name. Chad C. Mulligan dated July 4th. Take it away, Chad Mulligan, and give us your chronicle of the collapse of the Stars and Stripes. <clears throat> I have a confession to make. American culture feels utterly strange and alien to me. I felt that way a long time, but over the last several years, it's become more and more acute. The United States has become a place that is totally unrecognizable to me now. I just cannot believe what people accept as normal, and it keeps getting worse almost by the day. I've also felt somewhat alienated and disconnected from mainstream American life, and I don't know why. Even when I was a little kid, everything around me seemed so twisted and bizarre. I didn't get why people saw this state of affairs as, a, as normal or desirable. Even back then, I knew this wasn't the way human beings were supposed to live and that there was something unnatural or even inhuman about the American way of life. Maybe a uh, subhuman. Now, what do you think, Bigfoot? Uh, is there something inhuman about the American way of life? Nothing I have seen subsequently, subsequently has altered that opinion, only reconfirmed it. What's even more odd is that I grew up here and have spent my entire life in the United States. It's the only country I have ever lived in. So how can it be that this culture seems so profoundly disturbing and alien to me? I can't figure it out. I feel like a foreigner in my own country. 
the few times I have been fortunate enough to travel outside of the United States, it feels more like home to me than my actual home. More normal and healthy somehow, and perhaps even more free. Some of my observations about the changes this country has undergone within my lifetime may illustrate what I am talking about. It would be nice to know if we knew how old Chad was. I don't know why I think this fellow is about my age, which is 62. Local businesses are pretty much gone now. Everything is either a big box retailer or chain store. I can remember a time when that wasn't the case. Restaurants and cafes are still an exception where I happen to live, but I can still remember when ordinary people owned things like hardware stores and hobby shops. I can still recall my grandmother taking me to the neighborhood dime store. When I was younger, you never saw security guards anywhere except perhaps in a bank or a mall. Now they're everywhere, even in grocery stores. Security cars prowl the parking lots of just about every major business. And what's with every store having some paid employee whose only purpose is to stand at the entrance and passively, aggressively greet you as you walk in? I think this bizarre practice originated with Walmart, which we also didn't have when I was growing up, but now it appears to have spread everywhere. Was there some sort of organic demand for this? Do people really desire this when they go out shopping? Are we supposed to feel at home? If not, then why are corporations doing it? It's just so strange. Leave that shit in Dixie where it belongs. We keep it to ourselves in Wisconsin. My guess is uh, that Walmart, greet, Walmart greeters are actually screening for suspicious looking characters. I'm just guessing this. I did learn an interesting piece of Walmart, a little Walmart factoid, that the Walmart greeters n get drug tested, uh, but nobody else at Walmart does. I, Aaron, could you correct me on this? that the Walmart greeters are kind of a hidden brand of security guard. And so they need to be drug tested like security guards, unlike the rest of the employees. So that's my guess is what the Walmart greeters and all of these greeters are, are to first screen you when you walk in to see if you, you know, or look like you're gonna cause a problem but that's just a guess. Anyway, you can't get on or off a freeway off-ramp or make a left turn at a major intersection anymore without someone standing there with a cardboard sign begging for spare change. I never used to see that poverty outside the poorest and most desperate parts of town, which sadly were usually occupied by minorities. Now, it's everywhere. It seems to have started with the 2008 financial crisis and has gotten worse and worse ever since. I've even started to see them in the tonier western suburbs where I work. When I was younger, police officers walked around in light blue shirt sleeves and handed out baseball cards. They were friendly and not intimidating at least if you were white. Now they're like an occupying army complete with cutting edge military hardware and clad in all black uniforms and armor like something out of the Empire in Star Wars. <clears throat> Younger people seem to think that extreme military worship has always been a part of American culture. It hasn't. The whole notion 
of groveling before anyone wearing a uniform and thanking them for their service is a recent phenomenon. It's not normal. The idea that soldiers, and now police and firefighters too, are a class above the rest of us is so disturbing. We've made military members into a kind of super empowered elite class with rights and privileges far above those of ordinary citizens. Every business falls all over itself to offer active and retired servicemen more discounts and privileges than the next one. I remember my shock the first time I drove into a parking lot and saw special parking spots next to the door exclusively for military members. What the F? There is a term for this philosophy, Spartanism. The previous ideal in the United States was that of the citizen soldier who was just an ordinary citizen like everyone else who decided to serve their country, but it was no big deal. They weren't anything special and they didn't expect to be treated differently than anyone else. In Spartan culture, by contrast, soldiers were a separate and distinct class of people who ruled over the lower classes, the helots, who were expected to serve them and to whom they could do anything with impunity up to and including killing them. Is that what we have become? Celebrations of the military used to be confined to the major patriotic holidays, the 4th of July, Veterans Day, and Memorial Day. Totally reasonable and not unusual in most countries. Now it's all the time. Every event from the lowliest church picnic to the largest sporting event features the requisite salute to the heroes. Yes, this so-called, these so-called patriotic displays at sporting events have taken on a disturbing, almost Nuremberg rally-like quality. Supposedly, we need to thank them for keeping us safe. Safe from what? I'm a grown man. I can keep myself safe, thank you very much. If we were truly in danger from anything, I would be fighting against it myself. It's the same with guns. When I was younger, guns were for hunting. Pretty much the only people who had guns that I knew growing up were hunters, and they used them in the fall when they went up north to hunt deer. Now, gun fetishism is woven, in, is woven into the fabric of our society. Ordinary people fantasize about overthrowing the government or becoming a vigilante. They salivate at the thought of putting a bullet into their fellow Americans. When did that happen? How did that happen? Maybe I was just naive when I was younger but it didn't seem to be that way. You didn't need to post signs on the door of your business telling people to leave their firearms outside. It really strikes me whenever I visit the supermarket, I see people walking around with bloated and distended bodies or riding around on scooters Shelf after shelf is lined with processed junk food and sugary drinks. And I think to myself, is, is this really the best society there has ever been in history? Like we've been told, nobody looks physically or emotionally healthy. They look sick and tired. They look beaten down. They don't look like people who are thriving in any sense of the term. People are stressed and anxious, and it shows. 
There is a pervasive atmosphere of fear that lies under the surface of everything in the United States today. People who travel here from other countries feel it, even if they can't quite articulate it. Americans are some of the most scared and angry people on the planet. It's like the whole society is inside a pressure cooker and the pressure keeps ratcheting up year after year. Maybe that's why people are constantly snapping and going on spontaneous shooting sprees or becoming addicted to drugs, e.g. the deaths of despair. Mass shootings are now an almost daily occurrence all across the country. The news doesn't even bother reporting a lot of them anymore. Deaths from drugs and suicide are at epidemic levels. People have a vague sense that there's something wrong with the way things are, but they don't know who to blame or what to do about it. Well, half of them blame Donald Trump and the other half of them blame Joe Biden and they're all wrong and they're all right. That's the problem. Anyway, and they're constantly being played against one another to keep them from finding out. This is why the Donald Trump, Joe Biden false paradigm. I mean, obviously, keep the bugs in a jar fighting among themselves. We got the Trump tards versus the Biden tards. And while everyone's fighting inside that jar, the guys shaking the bugs in a jar are the ones laughing all the way to the bank. If anybody fails to understand why I call my hip camp in my Airbnb bugs in a jar. <clears throat> And that's not to mention the lack of community and the isolation and poor health outcomes imposed by the built environment centered exclusively around cars. America has become totally unrecognizable from the place I grew up in. But it's more than just the culture, it's the people. Americans seem to me to go around in an almost crazed or manic state. They can't abide by the slightest hint of silence or being alone with their thoughts. It's like if they even had a moment of silence or self-reflection, they would absolutely lose their minds. They seem to be constantly blaring loud music, watching television, playing video games, or incessantly scrolling on their phones. Every issue is seen in black and white terms, and people are incapable of understanding subtlety or nuance. And what's with telegraphing your political views and lifestyle choices by putting decals and bumper stickers all over your car or having a YouTube channel. Who cares? I added that about the YouTube channel. Americans don't know how to act around other people. They are poorly socialized. It's like they're living in a simulation where they are the only player. Americans act like boors and louts and are proud of it. They walk around covered in piercings and tattoos like some sort of extra in a road warrior movie. If you go to other countries, people actually know how to dress and behave around other people. Hmm, wonder if he's talking about me. Hmm, they look normal. They are cognizant of the fact that they are part of a society and that other people matter. Other people are treated with basic dignity and respect. It's simplistic, but it's true. Americans just don't give a fuck about anyone else. And uh, guys, I, I want to just make a disclaimer here. Just because I uh, read a 
a sermon or a rant does not mean I, I agree with every word of that. Uh, while I agree with what he's saying about Americans, I don't think this one, this one that Americans can take the full blame for. Uh, my buddy and I were just talking about goddamn Germans. Jesus. And Germans make Americans. Anyway, don't get me going about Germans, and I am one quarter German. Anyway, I need to watch how I'm pushing the envelope on Collapse Chronicles with this rant. I regularly hear stories about service workers who are screamed at, belittled, bullied, and abused by random customers who are told they don't deserve to get paid enough to live on or told to get a real job. They are told that they're the reason for inflation and not supply chain bottlenecks or greedy corporations and CEOs. And then there's the whole Karen phenomenon. What the hell is going on here? What in God's name is wrong with these people? I can't understand this mentality. Thankfully, I don't see too much of it in my own life, maybe because Midwestern nice is still a thing. And again, uh, I am not necessarily uh, talking crap about Karens. There, there's a lot of times that we need more Karens. Uh, you, you know, talking about putting up with this crap uh, that we put up with uh, everyone, you know, from our utilities uh, and the cops and banks. Uh, I, I can sound like a Karen myself. It depends on who you're being a Karen to. Anyway, moving on. Where I live, people constantly drive by in cars and motorcycles with coughing and sputtering engines louder than the average jet plane. Sometimes they blast ear-splitting loud music as well. It's a permanent roar that lasts pretty much 24 hours a day during the short summer months that I can't escape from, even inside the walls of my own house. Seriously, I can't stand it in here anymore. I'm living in a literal hell. Please send help. Are people coming? You're not coming to warn me about, uh, uh, anyway. It's a cliche, but Americans really are the most shallow and superficial people on earth. They, they don't care about anything except their jobs and making more money than everyone else. When you talk to an American you're really talking to their agent. Work is their entire life. Everyone is running the rat race, trying to give their kids a leg up in the increasingly bitter competition for status where the penalty for losing is being deprived of the most basic things needed to survive. Of course, the end result is that their kids will only end up doing the exact same thing in the next round of the incessant, incessant winner-take-all tournament that is American life. You can't base a society around pure competitive individualism. It simply doesn't work. Competition is not a social glue, it is a solvent, and we are increasingly coming apart at the seams. One of the best descriptions of American society I ever read came from Reddit, and I'm sorry I didn't save the comment, but going from memory, it was from someone who had managed to escape and move abroad. This person said that being born in the United States was like being automatically entered into a competition that you never signed up for. And we're socially policed by our fellow citizens to conform to this nightmarish social order, even to celebrate it. If you question it in the slightest, you will suffer 
ostracism, derision, and outright hostility like you have never known. They will talk about how rich we supposedly are and how we're the only country on earth with freedom and the lack of pesky regulations ensuring things like decent wages and working conditions that interfere with that freedom. They'll talk about our economic dynamism as if that does anything for the average person. They talk about how anyone can become a billionaire. They'll recite the same bumper sticker bromides and tired cliches from motivational speeches over and over again. They'll talk about how everyone else in the world wants to move here and how grateful you ought to be every single day that you were born here. And to break in, guys, I am thankful every single day I was born here. Okay, I have spent seven years outside of the good old U.S. of A. And I came crawling back with my tail between my legs. And if you don't like it, you're a loser and you deserve what you get. And this is everywhere. It's like being in a zombie movie. movie. It's just so lonely here. I feel alienated and socially isolated from everyone else. I walk around every day feeling like a complete stranger in the only country I have ever known. There is no one I can talk to. I don't have any friends here, nor really do I want any. There's nothing I see in 99% of Americans I encounter that would motivate me to become friends with them, even if there were the remotest chance of that happening. We would have nothing in common. Most of the few close friends I have had have been people originally from outside the United States, or at least have lived outside the United States for an extended period of time. Maybe that makes me an elitist, despite growing up near the bottom of the totem pole. I don't care. It feels like there is something missing in my fellow Americans. I don't know how to describe it. It's like they have no inner life. You can see it in their eyes. Every time I look at them, I hear the words of Quint from Jaws. You know the thing about a shark? He's got lifeless eyes, black eyes like a doll's eyes. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living. Yep, that is honestly how most Americans seem to be. When you look at even the poorest and most desperate people in other parts of the world, there is a certain basic dignity and spark in their eyes that you just don't see here, even among nominally successful upper middle class people. And obviously this man has not traveled widely. I desperately wish I could leave. There's nothing keeping me here after all. My last living family member, my only cousin, died this past March. But given my age, my skill set, and my lack of foreign language skills, it appears I am trapped in this rapidly unraveling society forever. If there were any way out, any way at all, I would not hesitate to take it. There is no one I would be leaving behind. I guess he doesn't have a little dog. All I need is a roof over my head, enough food to eat, and some time to read and write. If anyone deserves to escape, it's me. Yet, despite those meager needs, I just don't see any way out, and it's really dragging me down. Just another broken dream in a long list of many, I guess. I cannot imagine spending the rest of my life here.
maybe dying is the only way out. Well, there you go. Thank you, Chad C. Mulligan, for those uh, those inspiring uh, Fourth of July flag-waving words. We'll see if uh, Bigfoot. Can you imagine what Bigfoot uh, would say to his fellow Americans if he got a chance to interview? Actually, I have I have actually heard an interview with Bigfoot somewhere on the Doomosphere. Can't remember. Sancho, you were part of that interview. Sancho Panza somehow was involved with that. I, I could swear that there's somewhere in the Doomosphere there's an interview with Bigfoot who's holding Sancho Panza, but maybe I'm just having a crazy dream. Anyway, guys. We got to get ready for a duck rodeo, and uh, I guess these hip campers are coming. Anyway, get out there and uh, get your ducks in a row while you still can. My guys. No, little dog, I don't know if you're going to be involved in the duck rodeo or not. Where are the ducks? Well, the ducks are still in the bog garden. The ducks, I think they've died and gone to heaven. So we got to get these ducks. Do you want to get the ducks into the duck rodeo or what? If I want to have a duck rodeo. Oh boy, here we go. Wish me luck on getting my ducks in an igloo. Bye guys.